Hippocrates was right when he said, all disease begins in the gut. We used to think that we humans function independently and we sort of microbes as sick making little bastards and that we are better off without them. So we try to sterilize our environment and start swallowing antibiotics to kill off the microbes. However, as it turns out, we need those microbes. In fact, they are crucial for a healthy and long life. Many modern diseases are connected to an unhealthy microbiome. And one of the main reasons for it is that our microbiome tightly interacts with our immune system. And after all, about 70% of our immune system is actually associated with our gut. Let me repeat this, 70% of our immune system is associated with our gut. This figure here gives you an idea how complex the relationship between our microbiome and our immune system actually is. I'm actually amazed that this relationship works most of the time. But once it is disturbed, it can lead to a variety of diseases. Many we wouldn't necessarily connect with the gut. For the last decades, the incidences of autoimmune diseases have increased manifold. And while it is true that genetics play a big role in autoimmune diseases, our genes haven't changed very much in the last years. However, our environment and especially our diet has changed a lot. It is easy to see how a condition like inflammatory bowel disease has its origin in the gut as this is where the symptoms are. However, mounting evidence shows that our microbiome is involved in the development of many other autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes or multiple sclerosis. We once thought that autoimmune diseases are purely genetic diseases. And while it is true that your genes can put you at a risk for a certain disease, it is your environment, your diet and your microbiome that controls the expression of certain genes. A lot of research shows that the microbiome actually educates the immune system. This education process becomes pretty obvious when we look at allergies. The diversity of the microbiome rapidly increases during the first years of life. And a decrease in microbial diversity during that time caused by, let's say, swallowing antibiotics has been associated with allergies like asthma or food intolerances. As this paper here states it, birth by C-section, formula feeding, urban environment, lack of sustained contacts with the diversity of humans and animals, and antibiotic intake are clearly associated with an increased risk to develop asthma and allergies later in life. Okay, maybe you're lucky and you don't suffer from any allergies or autoimmune diseases. But this still doesn't mean that you shouldn't care about the microbiome immune system connection. Less obvious conditions like Alzheimer's, heart diseases or diabetes have their origin in the gut. And as this review explains, in type 2 diabetes, dysbiosis due to carbohydrate hydrolysis causes low-grade inflammation and decreases insulin sensitivity. And the same is true for heart diseases. In all cases, low-grade chronic inflammation causes the issue. When we hear about a hyperactive immune system, we would think that at the very least, it would protect us from infections, right? Well, as it turns out, it's exactly the opposite. You can think of it like this. Your immune system becomes too busy fighting harmless things or even yourself and kind of overlooks the bad guys. And usually a healthy microbiome helps you inhibit pathogens. But once the microbiome is out of balance, it can become really bad for us. A classical example would be Clostridium difficile infections that can cause terrible diarrhea that sometimes last for weeks if not even months if untreated. These infections usually start if a healthy microbiome was wiped out by antibiotics. Another opportunistic pathogen that still causes up to 10,000 deaths yearly just in the United States is Candida albicans. Under normal conditions it lives in our gut and never makes any trouble as our immune system and the other friendly microbes keep it in check. But once somebody becomes immunocompromised, Candida can take over and cause bloating, diarrhea and other bad things. So what can we do to improve the relationship between our microbiome and the immune system? In this study, patients with rheumatoid arthritis could improve drastically by consuming the probiotic bacteria Lactobacillus casei. The clinical symptoms reduced significantly and the ratio of inflammatory to anti-inflammatory cytokines improved. However, while I think that this is a hallmark study, it isn't always that simple. In the next video, I want to talk about the mechanism on how our microbiome controls the immune system and how we can influence this with diet and lifestyle. So make sure to subscribe. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.